Coke or Wadi Sabi. You wouldn't bet on Japan going for the ornate Baroque choice over the subtle and refined Zen simplicity. But that is exactly how things have fallen out here in Japan. In this, we shouldn't follow Japan down these dead ends and dark, damp alleys of visual usage when we are presenting. Let's all congregate on the sunny uplands and do it properly like the true professionals we are. Welcome back to year four of the Cutting Edge Japan Business Show, which we release every Monday. I'm your host, Dr. Rick Story, your corporate coaching and training guy, president of Dale Carnegie Training Japan and best-selling author of Japan Sales Mastery and Japan Business Mastery. We are bringing the show to you from our high performance center in Akasaka in Minatoku, the business center of Tokyo. Why the cutting edge? We are looking at giving you a big edge in business in Japan. Let's all be at the forefront, at the cutting edge of how to flourish here in this market. This is episode number 167, Minimalist Presenting. So let's get going. Zen study is a way to strip out all the non-essentials in life. The noise, the distractions, the things that are not so important. People sit around concentrating on their breath cycle or on one word or any number of methods to quiet the mind. They are seeking to get more clarity about themselves and what are their real priorities. As presenters, this is a good metaphor for when we are in front of people speaking. You would think with all those thousands of years of Zen, in Japan, in art, in design, in temples, gardens, in history, etc., that the Japanese people would be legends of simplicity and clarity when presenting. Not true. Presenting as an idea only came to Japan about 160 years ago. Fukuzai Yukichi, who founded Keio University and who graces the 10,000 yen banknote, launched public speaking in Japan in the Meiji period. There is still an Enzetsukan, or speech hall, preserved on the grounds of Keio University, where presumably the first public speeches were given. Western society plums the wisdom of ancient Greece and Rome, parliaments allowing debate, and Hollywood for models on speech giving. Japan has no traditional homegrown role model. If the authorities needed you to know anything in old Japan, a notice board would have been written there for you to understand. No shogunal oratory from the castle walls to the assembled masses. No Mel Gibson Braveheart style speeches before vanquishing the foe in battle. Japan bypassed all of that until Fukuzai Yukichi decided this was another area of modernization that needed implementation in Japan, like wearing ties, boots, hats, and petticoats. Of course, there were no slide decks in those days, but Japan certainly was an early adopter of the technology for giving presentations. The overhead projector, the slide projector, the modern lightweight projector, large screen monitors, electronic pointers, etc. Any venue you go into in Japan will be bristling with cool tech gear. Interestingly, the content on the speaker's screen will be bristling. There will be 10 graphs on one page, lurid diagrams employing six or more vivid colors, numerous lines of text so small you could use an optometrist eyesight test chart. Where has the Zen gone? To be an effective presenter, we don't need any tech or screens or props or gizmos we can just speak to the audience, enjoy being the full focus of their attention. As a result of this visual conflagration, 
many speakers are competing for attention with what is being displayed on the screen. Company representatives love to play the video of their firm or product or service. They can be quite slick, the joy of the marketing department. They are the pit into which a big chunk of money was thrown to the production company, directors, designers, film and sound crew, talents and innumerable others who all got a slice of the pie. Find out more when we come back from the break. If you want to become a fully competent and confident presenter, then do the High Impact Presentations course. We are all being judged when we speak, be it in the internal team meeting or in a public environment, be it the big bosses, clients, or an industry audience. Everyone is evaluating us. Don't blow it. Get the best training on the planet. Do the High Impact Presentations course now in either Japanese or English. Are you doing business with Japan? Do you really know how things work? Japan Business Mastery provides the answers. Do you have the right networks and know how to create them? Do you know how to get on the same wavelength with Japanese buyers? Do you know what being trustworthy looks like from the Japanese perspective? Japan Business Mastery is based on more than 30 years experience in Japan and will become your go-to guide. Want to succeed in Japan? Buy Japan Business Mastery now. Welcome back. The question to ask though is, does this video actually assist the speaker to make the key point under consideration? Often they are just like eye candy but are not on the point of the main argument. Unless it strongly reinforces your message, dump it. It will only be competition for you, the speaker, and will suck up valuable time, which could be better spent with you as the main focus. I saw Ken Doan, a well-known Australian artist, give a talk in Japan many years ago. He has a very unique visual painting style. He moved around from behind the lectern, stood next to it, and just spoke about his art to the audience. It was very engaging because it was so intimate. The Japanese audience loved it. There was only one source of stimulation for the audience, and that was Ken Doan. This is what we want, to be the center of our audience's world for the next 30 or 40 minutes. Don't. Use a slide deck unless there is something in that content and presentation on screen which really helps bring home your argument. If it is for information purposes, then that will work well. If you are there to persuade, then you will be so much more powerful if all the attention is concentrated on one point and that one point needs to be you. In this case, we have stripped away all the visual noise, so we have to fill the void with word pictures. We need to transport the audience to a place where they can see what we are talking about in their mind's eye. If you've ever read the novel after seeing the movie, you find yourself transported visually to the scenes from the movie as you read the novel's pages. This is the same idea. We have to usher the audience to a place, time and situation, that we are describing in words in such a way that visually they can imagine it. We don't always have to have slides or visuals. We are the message. So let's manufacture the situation so that we are the centerpiece of the proceedings and all eyes and ears are on us, totally focused on every word we say. We need to zen our way to speaking and presenting success. Please subscribe to the Cutting Edge Japan Business Show on YouTube. Share with your family, friends, and colleagues. Become a regular. Our website details are on screen now. enjapan.dale.com. It's also awesome value, so check it out. You might also enjoy our other shows for podcasts, Mondays for the Cutting Edge Japan Business Show, Tuesday 
for the Presentations Japan series. Every second Tuesday for the Business Touches in No Oshia show. Wednesdays for the Sales Japan series. Thursdays for the Leadership Japan series. And every second Thursday for the Business Pro Podcast. On Fridays, we have the Japan Business Mastery Show, and Saturdays, we have Japan's top business interviews. Now, you get these wherever you get your podcasts. Also, every second Thursday, we release the Business Pro Television Show. Every Friday, the Japan Business Mastery Show, and every Saturday, Japan's top business interviews on YouTube. In episode number 167, we are talking about sales showmanship. So, Yoroshiku, Onigai Tashimas, please join me for the next episode of the Cutting Edge Japan Business Show. We are here to help you, and we've only got one direction in mind for you and your business, and that is up. <laughs>